Chef David Rowe is back at it again. We're in the home stretch for our pork Wellington at the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. What we're gonna do now is a quick recap of what we have in this beautiful baby right here. We have the pork tenderloin we seared off. We wrap that with the excel and prosciutto, and we then wrap that as well in puff pastry to give you that nice flakiness that we know also well with any type of Wellington. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the pork Wellington out of the plastic, because we allowed that to sit inside that wrapped prosciutto and the wrapped puff pastry to get a nice, tight cylinder shape and keep everything nice and uniform. The reason we're doing that is because when we cut into the Wellington, we want to ensure that there's no air pockets or bubbles inside of that wrapped pork tenderloin because it makes for great presentation. And what I always say is you always eat with your eyes first. And the last thing you wanna do is spend all that time, energy, resources, money, because I know you work hard for that money, and it does not come out the way you like it. So make sure you're ensuring all these steps to have and secure the most ideal pork wellington you can make. Because it'll be worth it. All right. So unraveling, unraveling. Okay, looks beautiful. What you wanna do when you're baking it, before you're baking it, I like to use parchment paper because that way it gets a nice release and it's not sticking to the pan, which is again, the worst thing when it's done, the temperature is right, you're ready to eat and you can't get it off the pan. So do yourself and the dishwasher a favor, use parchment and lightly dust it with flour. Okay, just like that, guys. And then we put our Wellington onto that. And for me, the first thing I look at with any good Wellington is that nice, golden, flaky crust. And the way we're gonna achieve that is by putting a egg wash all over the Wellington. Egg wash, simply whisk eggs. You take that, it's gonna create that nice sheen, that nice gloss, and just make it that more appealing. So you take the egg wash and just, you go all over the Wellington. Top, left, bottom, right, all over. And that egg wash is gonna act as a gloss. Kinda of like, think about it like you know, you're getting a paint job. It's adding that top sheen, that top coat, to make it really pop. And we want our Wellington to pop, not literally, figuratively, because we're eating with our eyes and it's popping out at the camera, or in this case, popping out from your dinner plate. All right, simple. It's not rocket scientists here, people. Just brushing it, getting your Bob Ross on. Nice, even strokes, like yay. Okay, we're almost there. Got that top coat. And we're gonna flip it, you wanna get the bottom. Alrighty, starting to look good already, and we have not even put it in the oven yet. All right. And what the egg wash is also acting as a glue from sealing all the edges, crevices, and cracks that might be in there during the rolling process and sealing them up. So it's a twofold thing. It's for aesthetics and for practicality usages. All right, I think we're almost there, guys. Turn over one more time, make sure we got all over. All right. And if you remember from earlier, when we rolled up the Wellington, there was a seam from when we folded it, so you wanna make sure that seam side is facing down, because you want your top presentation side to look remarkable and immaculate, because we eat with our what first? You got it, eyes, correct. Gold star for you. All right, so that looks pretty sealed up. Got a nice shine on there from the egg wash. And I love to finish it with a little bit of Maldon salt or sea salt. It's gonna add a nice little salty crunch pop when you bite into it. And also add some nice contrast and texture. So we have some Mediterranean sea salt here. It would be nice if we took the lid off to get the salt off. <laughs> and just go ahead 
put some of that salt on top of that. Maldon flake salt works really good as well. Take it like so. It's gonna add that nice salty crunch when it's done baking. Just a little bit goes a long way. And then last but definitely not least, you wanna put some little slits, some slashes on top of the puff pastry. So that way, when it cooks, it's not exploding because the pork tenderloin, it's gonna finish cooking. We don't want that steam to explode and contract the puff pastry. So a couple little slits, not too deep, where you're cutting into the meat. Just a couple slashes, three or four, work perfectly, just for allowing an escape of that steam that's inside the puff pastry. A little more salt, and just like that, we are ready to go into the oven. I'm gonna put my puff pastry with the pork wellington inside at 400. And that's the brilliance of this Alto Sham Vector, where I can have two completely dishes, two completely different parts of my meal, cook at two different temperatures. I can set timers, the flavors, the scents will not cross-contaminate, and it's just its own self-contained oven. So it's essentially three ovens in one. But you gotta stay tuned for the next steps, so make sure to follow the Chef Series only at the Georgia Power Customer Resource Center. My name is David Rose, and we shall be back. Stay tuned, guys.